Yeah, Mercury retrograde always always makes me paranoid when I'm recording anything. Even though it's not Mercury retrograde, I always want to make sure my technology is working. <laughs> because I don't know, there's been a lot going on lately that feels like this last week yeah. especially has been kind of chaotic. We've and had so, a lot so, of solar solar flares and, and things happening and yeah. 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 And kind of like um the, the different and especially kind of like the sun them just moving into Aries that is very much about that kind of and the equinox and all these kind of things are being sort of yeah playing <laughs> playing yeah. Oil. yeah it just feels like um churning up the earth it's like we're mm. just kind of messing with everything going okay so what do you really want to keep and what is it that you really want because if you're not clear mm. all sorts of stuff's going to be bubble up um Okay, so for everybody joining us, I am Christy Nix. I am an intuitive and um, do business strategy mostly uh, in relationship strategy for women entrepreneurs. And then I have with me Debbie Best, who is an amazing astrologer and does a lot of human design as well. And among everything else, I mean, she creates cards and oracle decks and just books and anyway so um we are just kindred souls and could talk forever but right now we're talking specifically about new moon in aries thank you very much um i think on some of my information i've got new moon in libra no the full moon is in libra this month so just oh we're going to get into solar flares and everything else that's going on and how why everything feels a little chaotic um but new moons for me are like a, a basically a window of manifesting. It's like, what can you do to get clear on what it is you want to create? And it's it's really focusing. I use it to focus on what I want to create for the next 14 days. So mm -hmm. that next cycle up until we hit that full moon in Libra, thank you very much. Um, and then Debbie will go through and talk about what it means to have that new moon in Aries. Um, and yeah, because I have my south node in Aries, but that's another conversation. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a, we could talk all day about all sorts of stuff. Um, okay, so new moon. What does that new moon mean for you? And can you tell us a little bit about Aries' impact? Yeah, I mean, the new moon for me is is basically when the moon is at its darkest, and it's a time of quiet, actually, quiet reflection. And as much as it's about setting intentions of new actions, it's actually about going inwards. And so it's the perfect time to time, kind of like do your meditation, your journaling, and really kind of understand what it, what it is you want to kind of plant those seeds for the next, as you say, 14 days until the full moon, and then that full 28-day cycle. So centuries and centuries of years ago they used to use the new moon as a time of when the women would have their menstrual cycles mm -hmm. so they would work with the new moons on that side so they would always bleed on the new moon and then they would overlate on the full moon so again it's that time of quiet reflection it's also a time of when we kind of like at our most psychic and we get these downloads and but again it's not a time of actually taking action Mm -hmm. I would say the best time, yes, set your intentions, set anything that you want to kind of embark on on the next sort of stage. But the, the best time to actually take action is just a couple of days after the new moon. When you get that first sliver, you see that crescent phase, that this is um, that waxing crescent phase where you literally see it starting now to kind of get build. a little bit fuller and build. Mm -hmm. And that is then the perfect time to really kind of take action on, on what you want to uh, do. And then we kind of look at Aries. So Aries is the first sign of the, of the Zodiac and it is about that fire starter. It's fire, it's ruler is Mars and it's all about that initiation. How can we take action and where in our life, where can we take action? So when you look at an astrological chart, depending on whether it's natal chart or your solar chart, you're always going to have some aspect of Aries in there. So to kind of look at where Aries sits in your chart, that is gives you an indication of kind of where in your life that you need to take action. Mm. So for me, I have Aries on the seventh house cusp. So my taking action is always going to be around relationships, business partnerships, marriage, contracts. It can also be the house of enemies <laughs> as well as so that kind of thing. So business relationships and things like that, and new, new partnerships. 
And because it's that sort of like that Libra energy, which is normally the seventh house, um, it's about that balance. Aries also rules the head, the eyes, the blood. Mm -hmm. So people with have a, who have a lot of Aries energy, they usually might find that, that they might have to have wear glasses or they'll have problems with their eyes or they often have kind of like headaches. It can kind of make the, um, the skin and the hair feel very dry because it's that heat, it's a, it's a dry in energy. And, but again, it's also about that fire. So it's the first fire element. So we've got sort of like Aries, then we have Leo and then we have Sagittarius. So it's okay, I'm the one who's gonna kickstart Mm -hmm. this, this the first sign of the zodiac so and because it sits naturally in the first house it's where we would look at just after your rising sign or your ascendant so as you are birthed into this new life this is all about finding your identity your personality how you show up and present yourself into the world and Aries can have a little bit of an ego they can come with that little bit of a fight or flight and kind of get in there first but underneath it all, they just want to be loved. They just want to have that kind of connection and deep connection. So I feel a lot of Aries get actually misjudged and misrepresentative of God because they're so used to being kind of hot headed or kind of get, get so let's get in and do it. But actually, they're just doing what they're naturally here to do, initiate and inspire people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I do love the Aries energy. Yeah, it's like lighting a fire under your butt. Absolutely. And especially the new moon also kind of coincides with when the sun moves into the same sign. So we've just had the sun move from that dreamy Piscean energy that we've all been kind of enjoying, been en yes. enjoying but kind of having a whole fog around us. Um, it's now kind of, it's a cardinal energy. So it always coincides with the change. So we have like the equinox, we have the spring equinox, or we have kind of like the northern uh, the, the autumn equinox kind of like in the in the southern hemisphere so it's all about that sort of okay how do we birth something that's been bubbling under the surface that we've been kind of lying and dormant through this Piscean energy it's mm -hmm. now okay the weather starts to get warmer unless you live here in the UK where it's absolutely freezing <laughs> <laughs> you know it's, it's like yeah we're meant to be in spring but we've had snow today you know so it's all wow. this kind of energy of kind of you know we're all meant to be sort of you know I have my flowers starting to bud and kind of show but yeah we've had snow <laughs> so it's just about okay all right let's go with the flow and timing so yeah <laughs> yeah that sounds good. wow yeah because it's yeah it's hot it's already starting to get hot here yeah it's like all of a sudden the weather has shifted and we've gone from cool crisp mornings to sticky wow Ooh. warm afternoons i know i know <laughs> it's like well you know we have winter and we have summer i don't really think we have spring for maybe a week in between <laughs> about a week of spring and then yeah we just shift gears um, wow yeah so yeah i like the new moon and um aries i don't know i know that's in my chart i just don't know where i have a lot of fire in my chart so yeah, um, you have a grand trine of fire in your chart. So what are you? You are um, Cancer Sun sign, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Cancer Sun sign. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. So Aries. So Aries for you is literally on your tenth house. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of like, oh, what's going on over there then? Yeah. Okay. And so, and what is the tenth house? So the tenth house is all about work, production, mm -hmm. um, recognition, how you show up. It's that, um, it's the house of Capricorn and it's the house of kind of like the Saturn, the planet Saturn. So it's all about recognition, vocational and what you're here to do in this life and how you present yourself mm -hmm. uh, into the world. It can be paid work, it can be unpaid work. So it's, it's, all, um, it's all about, I suppose, that public image and recognition mm -hmm. and how you show yourself and present yourself whereas the first house is all about our personality right. the tenth house is all about that public image and how you are to the to the public well and that and so that might explain why over this last week or the last two weeks really it's just I feel like I've been getting idea after idea and instead of it just coming into my head and just popping in and I'm like okay and I brain dump it and then kind of 
sock it off to the side, you know, file it for later. Um, it's almost like I just feel compelled or pulled to continue and do a video series on it and create worksheets and put it out yeah. to my, you know, audience and all this other stuff where usually it'll come in and I'm like, oh, okay. And I'll just download it and be like, eh, it's gone. Yeah. We're good. Suck it off. So it's given and, you that uh, energy and it's given you that push, that little, as you said, that little kick underneath you, that fire starter. And especially to have a new moon in the 10th house is it's a beautiful energy because it's all about new energies, new ways of working, new ways of showing up mm -hmm. into the into the work environment and new ideas and anything that kind of when you can have any sort of transit in the 10th house is always going to be highlighting your work area. Mm -hmm. So say so for you if you have if you've been bubbling with all these new ideas and and things like that then go with it you know L allow it to kind of unfold because mm -hmm. it will <laughs> oh yeah whether we really want it to or not um yeah because i find that also being emotionally defined things for me um always come in waves and so it's like reminding myself that okay so if i have the energy to do this there's a reason Right. And then when it peters out, it's like, OK, we're, it's time to rest. we got more coming. I'm just going to yeah. rest for a minute. Um, and it feels like I really haven't. I've had days, like a whole day where it's like I am consumed with creating. And it's like, oh, you know, and doing all the logistics and stuff and putting everything into MailChimp and then linking everything over here and doing the activations and how, how they all connect. And um, like it feels busy, like mm -hmm. overwhelmingly busy. But it's almost like I can't stop until I get everything done and then once I get it done it's like okay I need to send this one last email you know and then I'll be complete and we've it's also had Mercury move into Aries as well so Mercury, so the transit planets of um, Mercury has moved into Aries so again it's all about that how you share your communication how you take Mercury is all about how you take in information and share that information with the world, the downloads. So for you, you're, you're having all these kind of downloads and inspirations and multitasking and kind of having that almost sort of energy to do it because for the last sort of like several weeks, it's been in Pisces. So we yeah. haven't had that. Yes, we've been planting those seeds. We've been having those downloads. We've been having all those ideas, those inspirations, but we mm -hmm. haven't had the energy to act on them. Mm -hmm. So now with the sun moving out of Pisces and moving into Aries and then we have the new moon, it's all starting to kind of bright. For me personally, I feel that there is, this is almost kind of like a clean slate. Mm -hmm. It's as if I'm, I'm it's, it's also the, the, the start of the astrological new year as well. So it doesn't go from that January to sort of like December, like we normally do. It goes yeah. from the start of the equinox. So again, it's all about that spring energy and as if we've got, as I say, I have more energy to do something, more creative yeah. energy to do something. And that fire that comes with it to kind of kickstart it then into uh, ideas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, and, I, and I've noticed that. It's like, I don't feel kind of, eh, let's just go with the flow. It's okay. We'll just float from one thing to the next. It's like, ooh, do, 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 do. And it's like, eh. Okay, I am responding. So this is right for me, you know, being a manifesting generator. Okay. Um, but it's been uh yeah, a different like um uh I do love and I have once I realized the seasonal shifts for me are equinox to equinox. Really, they are. Yeah. And by embracing that, I don't also I don't feel the pressure in December and January to create. A lot no, of the we, I don't know that. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are pushing those new products and everything, or even in December now, I'm starting to push new product and stuff or sign up for my new year, blah, 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 or whatever. And it's like, yeah, I don't feel that at all. Right. No. And then come spring, it's like, okay, so what, what is it we want? What is it we want to create? And it does feel like a blank slate. Like someone just wiped off the table and said, here you go. What do you want to put on it? Because you can also look at the chart. Well, I also look at the chart as well. It's kind of like where your placement is of where the sun is in your particular chart. And then you can kind of look at the quarters, like the spring, summer, autumn, winter, those kind of um, phases and look at kind of how, how they relate to your birth chart. So I'm born on December the 21st. So 
my kind of, you would think that December energy would be right at the top, but my sun sits in the third house, which is right down the bottom. And it's all that. So it's all that Gemini energy. And because I have a stellium in, uh, in the third house, so it's all bubbling in at least, you know, below that surface of energy. So for me, my kind of creativity and all this kind of really starts to bubble up around this March area and kind of movement almost as I'm starting to kind of wake up. Mm -hmm. I really start to feel this energy shift in the autumn equinox because I'm a Libra rising. Yeah. So it's all about that sort of autumn energy. And I really, I, could, I always was, was, was what the one that couldn't wait to go to school in September. Yeah. You know, it was almost that kind of like, oh, I'm off to school now. And, and it, again, it, it all coincides with that Libra energy. Even though I'm a December baby, I kind of like hibernate yes. <laughs> in those win winter months. You know, it's it's kind of like I need this sun. I need to feel this this almost kind of creativity that sparks me because the, the otherwise I, I get sort of I hibernate. Mm -hmm. and literally, I feel I do hibernate in the winter. Yeah, yeah and I yeah, because I have a Gemini rising. So, I mean, that puts me kind of the opposite. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Because so I feel like have, it's, so your cancer sun sign is going to be sitting then in your second house. Mm -hmm. So again, it's all that sort of, and that is Taurus energy. So it's all around that May, April, May energy. So this is where you're starting, as you say, you're starting almost to kind of wake up and bubble up and feel feel mm -hmm. that energy because it's all about that Taurian energy of of values and work and money and, and things like that yeah and that makes total sense because also my design date in human design is april 9th or 19th ah, something like okay. that so it's the beginning of april so um and i felt like since december i felt like i'm like come really it was more january i had all these great ideas but it's like no i'm waiting yeah. it's not time yet i'm waiting you know, yeah. and I knew it was coming. And then I was talking to one of my mentors. She's like, yeah, she goes, your design date is in April. She goes, you're waiting for April. That's your new cycle. Ah, and I was like, that's exciting. That makes sense then. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's interesting how I, a different modalities tell you something similar, mm -hmm. just in a little bit different articulation. Right. Yep. Um. And sometimes it's like, I really understand this, but sometimes I really understand this more. Um, but I love how it reaffirms. Exactly. Everything. And I, and that's, I think, why I fell in love with human design. Because um, I think we kind of found it the same sort of time. Mm -hmm. um, I was around sort of like 2016 or 15, 16 that I really started. Even though I've studied astrology for gosh, over 20 odd, nearly 30 years, I've years, always yeah. kind of, I've always been doing it. Uh -huh. um this was something else that I instantly kind of fell in love with and and when I had my report I remember I cried reading that report because it literally answered every one of my why questions um probably even more than my astrology um yeah. chart does because it kind of gave me a different I almost felt that I'd done this before yeah. in another life you yeah. know we were talking earlier on about past lives I really felt that a connection to this body graph to this this chart and it didn't take me long to really get into it mm. whereas some people are like oh gosh like astrology the human design is too much hard work it, it's oh gosh it's and so you much information in, yeah you go down that rabbit hole and oh, I always and it's a people, big one you yep start, if you start googling human design just be prepared <laughs> <laughs> you will be researching forever <laughs> Yeah, I have a girlfriend of mine who um, is really into astrology. And so she calls herself an armchair astrologer, which I think is interesting. Um, and she's into Akashic design, uh, yeah. Akashic records now. That's what she's studying. And um, but she uh, she's like, yeah, she goes, I was looking at my human design and, and I know astrology is part of it. She's like, but I'm looking at it going, okay, so I know just enough astrology to be really in trouble. It really, you know, in deep doo doo. And she's like, looking at human design, she goes, it's complicated. And I'm like, well, it's layered, yeah. right? So, I mean, and just like, you know, just like astrology, there's another layer to learn. There's always oh another gosh, layer you, to learn. 
you'll never ever fully be so no, when at all. people yeah. you, you never so as I say I've been doing it for nearly 30 years and you're still learning I've known astrologers who have done it a hell of a lot longer and they're still learning it, it's a lifelong study so if somebody tells you that you can learn it all in six weeks four weeks they're you lying need to make me. you need to run away <laughs> from these people because believe me you're still finding out something new this as you say it's those layers and for me I do a lot of kind of medical work within the astrology so I love that aspect of it and mm -hmm. kind of then going through the ancestral patterns and the cycles and really kind of making people aware of the cycles in their chart and really finding yeah. their genius within it yeah and so that is my passion but as you say there's just so much so many different layers of, of astrology oh yeah but, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah I mean and I'm and I'm finding that with human design human design is a great way to translate and help you understand why something's going on it's interesting to have that you know that other layer of um way to explain things yes so that people go oh because really ultimately you know I'm here to help you understand who you are how you work and what you're here to do you know and to do that on purpose and not half-ass it and go, oh, whoops, you know, why is this happening to me? And it's like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> exactly. And I'll always do the both. I'll get, I'll do their charts and then I'll, ha I'll print off their human design. So for me to get an, a deeper understanding of how they use their energy, how they use their energy signature within that chart. Mm -hmm. And once you kind of explain to them, sort of like, you know, if you've got all these open centers, okay, so you are highly sensitive and kind of but use this sensitivity as your gift it's not something yes. to kind of be you know Dying negative aspect of it right. you know right. embrace it and and that for me because I only have two centers defined in my chart so once I understood that all this sensitivity it made so much sense why I feel the way I feel why I take in so much of the world around me and why at times I it's too hard to sometimes be in contact with so many people. So for me, COVID, I personally loved it because yeah, I literally, I had to kind of step back and I used those two years to really, re I suppose, rest and mm -hmm. recuperate. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I have my little hermit <laughs> energy. Well, I am, so even though I'm a one three, I'm still yeah. kind of, I do, I do love to kind of do my research. <laughs> Yes, you like your rabbit holes, that's for sure. I do like my rabbit holes. <laughs> They're great friends. Oh gosh, yes. Yes, yeah, I totally understand. And, and being a 3-5, and I'm finding that, that's one thing I like about the profiles in human design is that I'm figuring out and seeing in my clients, especially how that is their process, especially when they're receiving information from outside of them, whether it's something that they had on their radar or not, it's like they now have a process their profile is their process. You know, yes. they need to experience it as a three. They need to research it as a one. They need to go through their process to come out on the other side with some emotional clarity, mental clarity, yeah. some intuitive, you know, validation really, because intuitively you usually already know, you know, the rest of you is catching up. And yeah. um, so you feel, you know, for us emotionally defined, 80% sure you're doing the right thing. Um, and I, I just find that it's fascinating how much our profile comes into play. Um, yeah. Like during COVID, I am, I'm an, I'm, I'm an introverted extrovert. And so I'm right there actually in the middle. Um, and having everybody home was a blessing for my cancer sign. Yes. My son's sign was like, everybody's Ooh, home. I can run this to school. school. I can do it to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then my three was like, okay, everybody out. <laughs> yes. I've had enough now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can relate to that. <laughs> I need everybody to leave. Um, so it's it's just interesting how all over it. So um, so is there anything that we should be practicing or anything that we should be doing? over the next couple of days with this new moon to really prepare for it, really use it well. Oh, what I can do, I can, let's go through all the signs then. So we, if we go okay. through all the zodiac signs from Aries down to Pisces, um, and then it might confuse some people, but how I, how I do it, and this is actually how they do it, how they write horoscopes, is that <laughs> they, they use what's called a solar chart. So you were all born with a natal chart. And if anybody is kind of new to astrology or hasn't seen their natal chart, it's just an astrological 360 degree 
wheel that is almost kind of split into 12. So these 12 are the houses, and this is what we call the houses, but they also relate to aspects and different times in our lives mm -hmm. of kind of how and different events kind of take place. Mm -hmm. So we have the natal chart, which I'll always use, but then I'll also use what's called a solar chart. And this is what we do. We would place your, so for you, for your example, as being a cancer son, we mm -hmm. would put this cancer energy on the first house. So as if you have a cancer son, cancer rising, so it would all be in the first house. So then what it does is then it changes the wheel all the way around. So whereas the first house is Aries and cancer would normally be the fourth house, by putting cancer on the first house, it kind of just shifts the Everything. wheel around. So you get a different kind of flavor and you get a kind of a, a, another layer, really. So for you, it would all be about, OK, so your cancer son sits normally in the second house mm -hmm. but when we put it on the solar chart it's a one it's a first house so you are always going to have a flavor of a personality how you show up in this one energy mm -hmm. and then do this second energy of where it would normally reside in the second house so you're always going to be looking at personality how you show up how you present yourself and it can be sometimes in conflict with the, the second house second house yeah sort of kind of like, okay, so that could be then related to value, self-worth, money. How do you make money? How do you spend your money, your time, your resources? So there could be that little bit of battle of the part of you that wants to be free and do all these aspects mm -hmm. compared to the, the second house kind of, oh, well, we just need to do the work now. We yeah. now need to kind of get down to it. Mm -hmm. So for me, I am a Sagittarius son. So you would put my Sagittarius sun on the first. So I'm always going to be in conflict with a first house energy and a third house energy. Mm -hmm. So it's about my personality, how I present myself. But then it's kind of in conflict then with how I share my message. Do I do it through my writing? Do I do it through my oracle decks? Do I do it through my speaking? And they've always been that kind of, always been afraid of public speaking or or all those aspects of it was kind of like, oh gosh, I don't want to look stupid in front of somebody else. You know, right. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that relates to a very young age being told or laughed at when I stood up to read something as a child. So all these kind of memories are stored. And when you're told something at, at a young age, you kind of then keep it as a memory block and you kind of think, oh gosh, no, I can't do that. I can't stand up on stage and speak. Or I can't present to, you know, a webinar. So it's very much kind of like, oh, so, so these energies. So if we kind of start with Aries, the sign Aries, so you can be Aries rising or Aries uh, sun sign, you have a new moon sitting in your first house. So this is amazing. So for yeah. all those Aries out there, this is wonderful. This is the time that you can start something new. You can kind of almost, it's a time to take action. You know, the first house is our self-worth, how we are present ourselves it's that self-esteem and by having a new moon there the new moon is all about taking action planting those seeds so for you it could be you could even kind of have a new haircut you could completely go and change your style your wardrobe how you present yourself it could be something new is kind of mm -hmm. been bubbling inside you kind of think oh I need a change now is this over the next couple of days is time to kind of take action and listen to that. So could this also be in relating to business? Could this also be yes. like your branding and things like that Absolutely. showing up online, even yes. your voice online, you know, it's almost Absolutely. like I'm going to switch and I'm going to start doing videos now and I'm going to, you know, be doing this in a particular way. Yes. Okay. So when we mm -hmm. kind of look at a business chart, this is very different than to kind of like if we were doing the natal or just kind of like a personal chart. So the first house in a business chart would be, again, like you said, that branding element. Is it time to kind of change the colors of the business? Is it time to change the logo of the business? Is it like, you know, that time of, of doing something new mm -hmm. that you would kind of do on the outside that can then propel you or give you that little bit of confidence boost to kind of carry on then with with the business and kind of as I say start afresh mm -hmm. um, so yeah so Aries and it's also the natural placement for Aries is the first house and it's the ruler of, uh, is Mars and it's that fire energy so then we kind of look at Taurus so Taurus we would put Taurus now on the first house this is where we're kind of going to go back 
anti-counterclockwise. We're going to go all the way around now. So for our lovely Taurians, you're going to have Aries, the new moon, sitting in your 12th house. Mm. Now, the 12th house is the house of spirituality. It's the house of, I call it the woo-woo house. Um, <laughs> but it can also be the house of escapism. Um, traditionally, in old kind of times of, of astrology, it would be the house of the convent, the monasteries, the, the prisons and all these kind of things because it, it's very much beneath the surface it's, it's kind of like you're, you're separate from self and um but it's it, it's also got a time of reflection mm-hmm. and the ruler is pisces and the planet is neptune so it's also kind of like the 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 house of the unconscious is the house of the dreams so for taurus this could be a time uh, a new time to kind of maybe look at your spiritual practice, but also look at aspects in your life where you do need to take a reset, Mm -hmm. where you do need to maybe focus on your health. Look at aspects where you've been so busy, busy doing other things. Now it's kind of saying, right, okay, it's now time to reset, take some time out, maybe step back. And I think sometimes when we come from a place of observation or what we observe from from a higher point, we get to look at something completely different and we get Mm -hmm. to look at it from a different standpoint and a different perspective. Uh, So uh, again, it's, it's, again, it's about maybe starting a new spiritual practice or um, just really embracing that time to kind of go within, do your meditation. Like I said, the new moon energy is about going inwards. It's quiet time. Mm -hmm. It's not really the time to take action until a couple of days later, because if you think about it, there's no energy in the, there's no energy from it it's not like a full moon well it's full and it's and it's beaming and it's about release and forgiveness and gratitude this is time of quiet reflection Mm -hmm. so if you can plant those seeds and really sort of make time to kind of journal go within meditate go for a walk write down those ideas and then a couple of days after the new moon then it's the time to take action because you'll mm-hmm. start to kind of almost feel that momentum building and you'll feel that energy to kind of move forward. So then we kind of look at our Geminis. Geminis, the new moon is going to be in their 11th house. Now, the 11th house symbolizes networks. It symbolizes communities. It symbolizes entrepreneurship. It's the house of Aquarius and the planet Uranus and it's that networking energy it's the house of friends so it's all about building that community so Gemini's your new moon is all about how do you build relationships with your community is there ways that you can maybe create some forms of networking because Gemini is that energy of Ah, they love to be the social butterfly they love Mm -hmm. to talk they love to read they love to study you know but then you can also get to the other side of Gemini that don't want to do all that they want to be quiet and be you know really reserved so it can be a time of maybe looking at friendships are there are there new budding friendships are there new sort of forms of partnerships networking can you reach out to people um can you kind of maybe send an email or and it's so funny I received a, t- um, a text from a friend that I haven't spoken to for five years we just kind yeah. of fell out yeah we just kind of felt like it was nothing, you know, we just, we just, it wasn't sort of like a huge argument. We just kind of, to be honest, I kind of remember why we stopped talking. And she reached out to me, well, actually, she reached out to my daughter a couple of days ago. And we spoke on the phone last night for li- nearly three hours. And it was as if we'd never, you know, never lost touch. It was all like a, gr- a great catch up. So it's a perfect time so if you've been meaning to speak to somebody or you've had this kind of like little oh, edge, I really yeah. wouldn't, yeah, I really would like to kind of see how she is or he is, send a text, say hello, been thinking of you, how are you? And see where that conversation kind of um, yes, comes yeah. in. Mm-hmm. So then we have our lovely cancers. Um, like I said, your um, new moon is going to be on the 10th house. So again, this is the house of our highest potential, how we present ourselves. It can be the house of our public image, and this can be through paid work or uh, volunteering work. And it's, again, it's the house of the career and the role you play um, in the world. 
and it's also the house of authority. So it could be authority figures um, because it's ruled by Capricorn and Saturn. So it's very much about that sort of authority figures. It could be government, politicians, it could be all those bankers, all those kind of um, those figures. So to have a new moon in the 10th house, amazing. It's going to be that kickstart of something new that's going to happen within your career, your business. It could even be a time to leave an old a job that you've hated and start a new business, mm-hmm. start a new venture, do something that I think COVID has taught us that we can do anything if we put mm-hmm. our mind to it. And we don't have to stay in a job just for the sake of paying the bills, because if it doesn't set your soul on fire and it doesn't give you that passion and joy, then personally, why yeah. are we doing it? Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. how I feel. That's how yeah. I feel. Yeah. And it's about, you know, take what we, those opportunities and, and you will probably find that opportunities will start to present themselves. Mm-hmm. And if you get that knock on the door, answer it. Mm-hmm. And say yes to where you kind of, you know what? I'm just going to say yes, just for the just for the fun of it. And don't yeah. hold any attachment to it. You know, just kind of, it could be a sense, okay, well, um, somebody could invite you for a conversation. Do you know what? I'd love to have a conversation with you. Let's kind of go from, go there. Mm-hmm. So then we have our Leos. Leos, the new moon is going to be in your ninth house. This is all about, uh, it's the house of spirituality. It's the house of religion um it's the house of higher learning and it's also the house of expansion it's naturally ruled by jupiter and sagittarius so it's also the house of international travel but it's also kind of like long distance travel and if we look at it from a business aspect it's kind of like the house of um whereas the third house is about your communication your writing how you share your message. The ninth house is very much about how can I share that message wider? Like how a global, a Absolutely. global impact. Do I do that through podcasts? They're really popular at the minute. Do I do that through again network marketing? Do I do that through social media? Do you do it through all these different aspects? But it's about how do you share that message? So a new moon in the, in, in the ninth house for Leos, again, is all about creativity. How can I share my creativity, whether it's work, business, whatever, how can I share that to a wider audience, but do it from a fun aspect mm-hmm. and have more fun, creativity. And I feel sometimes when we, we have that inspiration to do something, don't let fear stop you from doing it. Mm-hmm. there's a reason why it's showing up so because for Always. me mm-hmm. I wrote for, um to me funny enough I was doing my meditation today and I wrote um my daily affirmations and I wrote in there that kind of like when I push past fear my creativity store soared because when I started kind of you know four months well nearly six months ago when I started embarking on kind of creating oracle decks mm-hmm. I've never ever been would never said I'd be able to do it somebody told me you or you'll be creating art I was like yeah right <laughs> it, it just frightened the life it meant to me and I've gone on to create four decks so for me but I've had fun doing it and mm-hmm. so again this is like the minute I kind of step back and kind of like push past through that fear I loved it it was the joy of doing it mm-hmm. and so Go for it, Leos. Really kind of take that inspiration, that creativity, that spark, really have fun with it and kind of go, do you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm going to do this just for the fun of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like so, so then we have our Virgos. So Virgo, for you, um, the moon is going to be in your eighth house. So the eighth house is ruled by Scorpio and the planet Pluto. And it's the house of, I always don't really like all saying this, but it's always the house, we call it the house of death and rebirth. It's also the house of transformation because you have that Plutonian energy of, of transforming, bringing things to the surface to be brought to light. It's the house of um, finances, inheritance, it can be taxes. 
it's the house of secrets um and it could be sort of it could be also the, the secrets around money sex or both <laughs> you always find it could be something's going to uncover and kind of <laughs> bubble to the surface that you thought was kind of like not 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 going to show up there so this new moon is kind of shining its little bit of a light on um that particular area of kind of finances and for Virgos it could be okay how can I create or how can I in, look at ways of making money differently and because it's the house of finances but it's how you make your money from other people so it could be and it's long-term investment so it could be anything to do with kind of are you getting into kind of cryptocurrency are you getting into kind of bitcoin are you looking at new ways of investing are you doing something differently in your business are you adding more of multiple streams to your business how can you do something that is creative that you love to do but then it's going to kind of a give you more money or give you more kind of financial freedom if, if that was your kind of end goal of but as i say doing it through you might even find that you'll have an inheritance you, you never know it could be you could have like a um an unexpected check that could come through the mail all these kind of things so it's, it's kind of like what is bubbling mm -hmm. and i always say to people pay attention to where your dreams usually around the new moon and it because what they, they they're showing you new those little buds of seeds what are you starting to plant and take note of it um because once you take action there's always aspects within the months of, of the um the full 28 days where you can kind of take a little bit of a detour and kind of sort of like do that sort of like you know oh no I don't really want to do that anymore and we call it like that plot twist um mm, yep so this is why I always kind of say to people when you make your new wishes or your new moon intentions don't always put an attachment behind it because you never know how it's going to change and you never know how it's going to how it's yep. going to show up and how it's going to unfold yep just do something so if you have an inspiration to kind of maybe move home or look for a home okay set that intention that the perfect house is waiting for me mm -hmm. and see what comes up for you mm -hmm. but again as i say that it's that new energy of kind of like how can i do some long-term investment so then we kind of look at uh, libra um they're going to be in their natural placement so they're going to be sitting in the seventh house so for them, it's all about new forming new relationships because the seven times is all about partnerships, marriage, contracts, business partnerships. But it's also about balance and how do you balance work life, personal life? Because Libra rules the kind of our kidneys. It also rules the skin. It's ruled by Venus. So again, it's all about those those balances. Are you out of alignment? Do you feel out of balance? Because it's going to show up somewhere in your life, whether that's through your health or situations. And I always find um, the seventh house is very much about those mirrors. Mm -hmm. The people that come into your life, the situations, the business partnerships, the opportunities, they're always a, an almost kind of like a mirror aspect of kind of what's going on with you. And so it's about how, whereas the first house is all about personality, self, how you show up. The seventh house is about how you show up in partnerships. How do you show up in relationships? And, you know, it's also can be sometimes codependency with Libra energy, but again, it's okay. How can I be me, but also be me in a partnership as well? Mm. That makes sense. Yep. You know, how we kind of show up in that. So again, so this could be new. It could be new opportunities coming forward, new romances. And I would probably say it could be new romance because it is that Aries energy, you know, passion, you know, start embracing. And as I say, if you are looking for love or if it's something that you are looking, you might find it in this new moon. You might mm -hmm. find it in this new cycle. So um, and again, answer that door if it's knocking. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, then, if you're invited to go out go out <laughs> uh, go out exactly go out and have fun right. so then um where are we now so i've done the, the libra okay we're in scorpio mm. okay so our lovely scorpions um the new moon is going to be in your sixth house and this is normally the house of virgo and the house of 
uh, Mercury. The sixth house is the house of service and how you are being of service to others. It's the house of health and it's the house of routines as well. And traditionally, it used to be the house of the servants and how you would do that sort of work, those invisible hands behind the scenes kind of thing. We are the ones that are doing the work, but doing the work that you enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. And I often kind of say to people when they're, when I see a lot of kind of energy going on in their sixth house, do you actually enjoy the work that you're doing? Yeah. And for some, they say yes. And for others, they say no, it, it doesn't. It's, I'm just doing it just for the, for the sake of it. Yeah. And I'm kind of like going, okay, so you may need to kind of change that pattern of kind of looking at it and kind of go, all right, so you either come from a place of, all right, I'm going to change how I show up in work. Instead of having everything overwhelm me, it's now time to kind of go, okay, how can I do things differently? How can I delegate more? How can I simplify my life but still do the work? Yeah. And so this new moon in the sixth house for Scorpius are all about new routines. It's time to really set those new routines, whether it's health routines, fitness, uh, nutrition, new ways of working, organization. Is it something that is kind of you need to sort of delegate to let go rather than just keep piling and piling and piling? Because it's also the house to health. It's going to show up somewhere. So it's like self-care. So it's like self-care in work and self-care in just on all aspects, all personal business, all of it. It's like, how do I take care of myself and still do what I need to do every day? Exactly. And for me, the whole theme of 2022 is all about simplicity. How can we, you know, do things that we still love to do, but we don't have to have all these. I mean, we've become so overwhelmed by how many apps we have on our phones, how many, everything is done through those aspects of it. We become so overwhelmed by trying to remember all these passwords, trying to remember everything. And if something goes wrong with our laptop, oh my gosh, if we lose our phone, we're like, ah, because we we rely so much on this, on technology. So Mm -hmm. it's about, okay, it's not a case of getting rid of it because we we need it to certain aspects, but it's about how can you simplify your life and still enjoy the work that you do and then be of service to others so then we have the Sagittarius um the new moon is going to be in their fifth house the fifth house is all about it's the ruler of of Leo and the sun so the fifth house is all about creativity it's the house of fun it's the house of love it's the house of children it's the house of animals it's also the house of pets it's the house of good fortune it's the house of spontaneity and abundance so it's about how can you enjoy your life? So this new moon energy, for me personally, as a Sagittarius, is all about those creative bubbles. What am I starting to do? And for me, it's opportunities with my oracle cards. Mm-hmm. Things that are coming, that are coming sort of opening the doors for me that I didn't think were possible. So it's all these different kind of aspects of, oh, okay, how can I do something that I truly love and create but also kind of share that um, message. So, could, for, so for any Sagittarius, that it could be, how can you start something new, or is it a new creative project, or even kind of a new love, because it's the house of love, it's the house of kind of romance. So, you know, is there something kind of blossoming? Is there something that you're enjoying? Are you actually enjoying loving you? You know, Mm -hmm. you as yourself, really kind of getting comfortable in your own skin. And I feel that once we are so comfortable with our skin and who we are as a person, it reflects everything else and all those around us. So it's a good time for Sagittarius. I was kind of like, when I was writing that today, I was like, woo! (laughs) (laughs) Yay me! Yay! Finally! Some good news! (laughs) Oh, it's funny. And then we've got our, our Capricorns. So um, Capricorn, <clears throat> the new one is going to be in the fourth house. So this is normally the sign of the house of Cancer and the and the and the moon. So Capricorn, it, and it's it's Cancer's opposite sign um, naturally. So 
a fourth house Capricorn is sometimes not comfortable being there because <laughs> it's that moon <laughs> energy. They want to be on the top. They want to be in the 10th house. So <laughs> having a new moon in your fourth house, it's fourth house is all about home. It's, um, but it's about that ancestral home. It kind of be ancestors. It could be kind of like family relationship. It could be your relationship to your mum, your father, your parents. But it's also your relationship to yourself and your home, but also your emotional body being in in your home. And what I mean by that is, can you be in at home in your body in home? Does that make sense? <laughs> when I start to talk about that, people kind of like look at me and go, what is she talking about? So because it the cancer energy rules that emotional body mm-hmm. and it's that emotional sensitivity within us. So can we feel at home even though we're not in our home? Right. So it's because yeah. it's so if you think about it, it's that that crab, because the, the cancer sign is is that is that crab symbol mm-hmm. and it's a kind of like you know the home is on their back for some mm-hmm. of them mm-hmm. you know sort of thing so can they take that home and be somewhere else mm-hmm. if that makes sense so for me I and I have this placement I do have Capricorn in my fourth house so for me it is about I could take my laptop anywhere my business is my laptop mm-hmm so my business is kind of like I can I can and I can make a home anywhere. That's mm-hmm. how I feel. Um, so again, it's about being comfortable in your own body. So to have a new moon in the fourth house for Capricorns, it could be a new time to kind of maybe do some home renovations, maybe do some decorating, maybe feeling that you're oh let's do a spring clean, let's start decluttering, let's really, you know, sort of, I mean, for me last week, I started throwing out so much paperwork, I didn't realize I had all this paperwork, and it was kind of like, I don't really need all this stuff, this clutter, so a new moon energy there can be about how can we do something new, and create something new whether that was you know redecorating painting adding some soft furnishings to the home making the home beauty add flowers or those spring flowers so it's about it's not an action kind of um house the fourth but it's one of the most important houses out of the whole zodiac because if you have a strong foundation Mm -hmm. if you have those four pillars and you build from a strong foundation then it's going to show up in your 10th house of work Mm -hmm. got it so it's about that strong so if you have that solid that you can be at home anywhere within this world anywhere in in your home Mm -hmm. but it's about and you are success you're sort of like you fulfilled and you you really kind of centered in that place then it's going to show up in different aspects in your life whether it's aspects in your relationships, your work, your business. Mm-hmm. If you have a strong foundation, mm-hmm. then it kind of sets the stage for everything else. Mm-hmm. It's like being at home, being you. Yes. And just owning that. Oh, exactly. And being comfortable with that. Comfortable, yep. So then we have Aquarius. Um, your new moon is going to be in your third house. So the third house is all is the house of Gemini and the planet Mercury. So it's the house of communication. It's the house of um, how you share your message. It's also the house of siblings and cousins. And it's also the house of sort of like short distance travel. So whereas the ninth house is larger, bigger expansion of Jupiter, it's that kind of long distance travel. The third house is that short distance travel and being sort of um having lots of kind of family members around you you know being close to your family but again it's that sibling energy and in business it would be okay how do you share your message do you share it through your podcast and your do you do it through your your social media do you do it through art do you do it through music but how do you share your message Mm -hmm. so to have a new moon for Aquarius in the third house is all about okay how do I 
look at creating new aspects within myself. So that could be your work, it could be your relationship. Is it time to have a conversation with somebody? Something that you've maybe hurled off on actually saying, but now you've got that Aries energy to kind of go, Whoosh, yeah, I need <laughs> to have a conversation with you. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be, as you say, kickstarting, like you felt that, you know, that energy to do all this work, it's the house of kind of like keeping busy and but how can I share that message? I want to get it out there. I want to write, am I inspired to write posts? You know, am I, I inspired to kind of do a live? Am I inspired to do a TikTok? <laughs> all <laughs> these kind of aspects. How do you share that message and start something new? So then finally, we have our Pisces. And for you, it's going to be in the second house. So the second house is um, ruled by Taurus and Venus. And again, it's the house of finances. And it's also what you hold dear and what you hold value. And it's also the house of kind of like hoarding. We kind of look at it, okay, how do you, because it's about values. And Taurus energy is very much about holding on to something but sometimes they hold on to something for far longer than they need to hold on to it mm-hmm. and a shadow element of Taurus can be everything is going to be taken away from me mm-hmm. so they're going to be holding on to kind of sort of like like I laugh at my mother she is a Taurus moon and during the um the pandemic she was the one that had all the the toilet rolls <laughs> <laughs> and I was like what are you going to do all these toilet rolls <laughs> she was the one that she always had to make sure she had food she always made sure she had supplies so it was, it was very much about that sort of energy of mm-hmm. I've got to have things here and safe and so to have a new moon in your second house again about finances it's about okay how can I create my finances how can I um Look at where my money is going. Where are my resources going? How am I spending my money? Am I spending my money frivolously or am I spending my money, you know, holding on to it, you know, looking around kind of like work and self-worth and how can I then, whereas the eighth house is all about investments for long term, the second house is all about that energy around holding on to kind of things but are you holding on to them just for the sake of holding on to them yeah so it's it's because Taurus energy is about the agriculture it's all about kind of like the land what you hold dear and Taurus rules the throat and the neck and the thyroid so you often find a lot of people that um, are holding on to things they can maybe holding on to them emotionally and it gets stored in the throat, it gets stored in the neck. And this mm-hmm. is the energy of when they burn out because they're pushing and pushing to do something for the sake of, you know, it's very much about that will energy. How am I showing up? But who am I showing up for? Am I showing up for myself or am I showing up for somebody else? Yeah. The, te- the second house is very, I find it very similar to a will energy in that, you know, are you doing something just for the sake of doing something or are you doing something just to prove to somebody or to prove to yourself? So it's about those values and what does those values mean to you? Mm-hmm. Do, does it mean like time over work or does it mean kind of self-worth? You know, oh gosh, I can't do that. I'm not good at doing that. So you kind of devoid and stop kind of trying. So mm-hmm. this Piscean energy sitting in a second house with a new moon in Aries is saying, where can you find somewhere that you can start to create more money? Mm-hmm. Where can you look at your finances? Are you overspending in a certain area in your life that you can maybe hold back on, pull back on, do those real sort of finances, really start to kind of look at your, where is your money going? Where are your resources going? Where are you spending your money? Mm-hmm. And check your bills. And it could be a kind of making new healthy habits. You know, a lot of kind of pattern energy is all around money and self-worth. And maybe it could be a time of kind of looking at informing sort of, you know, breaking old patterns, but actually forming new healthy patterns around money and self-worth. Yeah. (sighs) 
And that is it. <laughs> Has that been okay? <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> oh, you're funny. You're funny. Yeah, I like I like how taking it through that aspect and then pulling in aspect of what that house is. I think that is huge to understand how to best use this new moon energy. And it's like, um, and it's just, I mean, it's almost like you have to break down the cycle into new moon to, you know, waxing and then from waxing moon to full and then full to waning. Waning. Yeah. And, and yeah. So it's almost like you do it like a week at a time. You're looking at, you know, three to five days here and then yeah. three to five days on either side of this and then three to five days before and then three to five days after. And, you know, it's like interesting how to, to break it down because I'm all about patterns and I like seeing mm -hmm. how different patterns and how they affect our cycles and um you know and absolutely really leverage and these, that energy and especially when these these moons these these the moon kind of moves into a different sign and it goes into a different sign every two and a half days so if you start to kind of look at that energy and start to allow those different moon signs those different moon phases how are they showing up for you emotionally how are they showing up for you in your body are they and once once you start to work with these cycles and you start to work with these patterns, you really start to embody the energy of the moon. And it almost becomes naturally that I don't even have to look at what moon sign we're in or what moon phase we're in because mm -hmm. my body already knows it. Mm -hmm. And it's telling so you. I know, yeah, it's telling me. So I know that when it moves from Aries and it moves into Taurus in the next couple of days, I'm going to start wanting to eat all nice things because <laughs> Taurus is all about food and nice <laughs> food and drinking nice wine and cooking and all those kind of sets, five cents of delicious kind of Venus energy. So I always know I'm like, oh yeah, I'm starting to eat a craving sweet. So I'm starting to want to kind of cook. And then when it moves into Gemini, I can almost feel that I'm my mind is active. I'm really starting to kind of, so if you're doing any content writing or you do writing for a living, mm -hmm. whether that's through your social media or whatever, Gemini moons are amazing for doing that writing because okay. you get so many downloads, you get so many ideas, but then wait until you get a Virgo moon to do the editing. Because Virgo moons, you it's also great for kind of, cleaning you want to kind of Virgo energy is all about that kind of I want to clutter I want to clean I want to organize but you also get very judgmental and very critical so it's the perfect time to really kind of go through what you've written on your Gemini energy to kind of your Virgo energy kind of going up so you could do a whole content a month's worth of content writing just in the space of those those moons mm -hmm. oh yeah and have you and map, and map it out Mm -hmm. so it would be interesting to do even like a journal exercise to where it's like okay so you know pay attention to how you feel right but also what you're pulled to do versus what you're what you think you should be doing but you're not being pulled to do exactly to understand where that disconnect is um and then and sit with it and then see how it shifts in the next few days every few days it shifts right mm -hmm. and it's like okay well i'm really you know i'm getting all these downloads and stuff and well you know moons and Gemini and I'm like I'm just gonna write right 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 yeah let it be knowing that when I move into cancer cancer is going to be a little bit more chill and yes. more you know so everything moves in that wave again right yeah of activity versus no activity activity versus no activity so um exactly and that cancer energy they want to stay more at home so you mm -hmm. often find that cancer energy they want to be closer to home cancer also rules the digestive system and the stomach so you also sometimes have to watch that on a transit um moon in in cancer because you might find your, your sensitivity is heightened mm -hmm. and you kind of get that so it's like that gate 19 energy you very much sensitivity to kind of different foods but it might be only just a couple of days but you'll notice it, but you'll want to kind of stay. So I always say to people when I'm kind of coaching clients or if I'm doing some moon work with them, pay attention to kind of like when the moon is in a water sign, because yes, it's natural for a moon to be in a water sign, but it affects you emotionally and physically very differently. Yeah. And Piscean energy is, again, if you just want to 
I have a natal Pisces moon. So I want to kind of almost kind of shy away from everything. It's my time to really reset, ready then for this Aries energy where I'm like, whoa, I'm ready to kind of go. Yeah. And as I say, so this cancer energy is very much about slowing down, being nurturing, being mother, just want to stay home and give yourself permission to do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. You can literally map your whole life, business, career, just using these moon phases. And you'll be so far more productive than actually stick into a normal Gregorian cycle calendar. Yes. Yes. And I noticed that we naturally, the, you know, to the our moon. natural cycle. Yeah. Yeah. And I know yeah. for generators and manifesting generators, any generator type, since we have that defined sacral, that's going to make us have sensitive digestive problems when we're out of sync. It's going to, yeah. sh- it's going to show up in that digestive system. Yeah. And I do really, and I do, and I am a generator and that will show up for me. Um, I do feel that, that if something is, if I'm out of alignment or I'm not feeling right, it's going to show up in my digestive system, my stomach. Yeah. It just feels out of sorts. So yeah. for me, it's so important that I eat the right foods and I, as much as I kind of want my sweets and I want my nice food, I know, yes, it's lovely to eat and have and enjoy it in that moment, but I know it's going to do something. I'm going to feel it later. So it's all You're about moderation. <laughs> I'm going to pay for it later. So I yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, yeah. Cause I'm also um, alternative. So uh, alternating and with alternating um, simple food is best. And I've always wondered why, I've never been really drawn to like really fancy gourmet, you know, nuclear molecular dining and all this other stuff. And I'm like, meh, I just, um, (laughs) you know, part of me is thinking, wow, I'm just so not cultured. The other part of me is like, I like food simplistically to where I can taste each individual thing. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I find that even doing like stretching to like doing casserole or anything where everything's all blended or soup. I will sit and eat individual things out of the soup. It drives my husband nuts. And, um, <laughs> but, it, but it's like my body, that's what my body wants, right? Yeah. Is the individual pieces, not everything all squished together in a whole. So it's been interesting to sit with that. But now that I understand, like with the moon phases and stuff, I want to track that. I want to see yes. what that pattern is and see how my energy flows from high to low you know, and maybe, you know, is it the lows that I, I extreme, I experience more emotional lows, right. Mm -hmm. During a water sign, you know, because being emotionally defined, we have that wave and I'm individual energy. So it's going to be different for individual energy, you know, and collective or tribal. So, um, and it's a good way to look at your family and look at your friends. mm -hmm. You, cause it's because it's so unique to us and how we each individually react to this. Mm -hmm. Somebody is very different you know, it, it could affect somebody very different than it could affect me. So, mm-hmm. uh, but you always pay attention to kind of like that, that full moon energy because it's heightened. And this is where the word lunatic and the asylums mm-hmm. used to come from. It's because of the lunar moon. And this yeah. is why they, they started to discover that during a full moon, it affected people differently. Mm-hmm. And it made certain people kind of react whether you know emotionally physically and they started to kind of map it and understand oh there's something to this and they, mm-hmm. they used to do some they've done some studies in schools as well with certain ages of teenagers how differently that they were reacting around a full moon yeah I had to keep that in mind because my son's a Capricorn mm-hmm. and um and for him to be in this fourth house and him just wanting to stay home him wanting yeah. to be you know basically closed up in his room and you know, he's been emotional the last few days and it's like a pendulum back and forth. And part of that is the hormones, I know. But um, it's interesting though, to see him sway back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes he's like, yeah, yeah. And it would be, I don't want to kind of like really go too technical for people, but um, it would be what we call a square, a challenging aspect because cardinal signs kind of like you have your Aries Libra Capricorn and Cancer they they all kind of square each other so there's going to be some sort of tension 
between this Aries energy and the Capricorn energy. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a challenging conversation. So the Capricorn wants to do the work, even though they're both cardinal energies, they're both starters. Mm -hmm. Aries wants to kind of do it sort of alone and mm -hmm. Capricorn and it's very passionate about it and all this kind of whereas Capricorn hasn't got time for that they haven't got yeah. time for the small talk mm -hmm. they know what they need to do they know what they need to get to the top of the mountain and they don't want to do anything else about it they just want to get there <laughs> so if they get there in quiet and solitude they will whereas yeah. Aries want to tell everybody about their adventures <laughs> So it's a very different, so it's a very, it's that fire earth energy that's like <laughs> sparks. Oh, that's funny. That's true. Oh, oy vey. So, um, <laughs> so what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Because I'm sure. They, oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> I, never, I, I never always know my, my handle. <laughs> right? They can reach out to me on, um, oh, gosh, let me see if I can find you. Have you got it? There, it's at cosmic alchemy underscore debbie bus is it yeah. there yeah is it that yeah and i'll put it i'll put it also in the in below the description below yes they can reach there or i'm on facebook debbie bus or they can reach out to me on my email debbie bus and it's the number one at gmail.com mm -hmm. perfect they do it, and they can reach out and if you want to book a reading or um just I offer kind of like a free 15 minute kind of call just to kind of see what they want to do. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I so appreciate Amazing. this. Yes. Fun. Yes. We've talked about a lot of stuff. We as have. we usually do. <laughs> as we usually do. <laughs> this is fun. And I'm glad uh, I'm glad we got to do this. I think this is something that people need to understand how to bridge that gap. And um, between, well, what does this mean for me? Yes you know, and how do I put that into my actual world? And not necessarily, a lot of people, when they talk about human design and astrology, um, it's usually, I don't want to say big words, but it's usually the description is very technical and stuff. And so it's yes. like, I don't understand what exactly that means for me. It sounds exactly. great, but it's, I, what do I do with that? And, and so that's the beauty I feel that what we both do with you, especially with your human design, you know, when you looked at my chart, you kind of you break it down to a deeper layer and a de almost kind of pretty much kind of what I do with the astrology I kind of make astrology easy for people to understand because yeah. as I say there's so much like human design there's so much technicality to it and if you start reading the books you kind of go oh gosh I've completely my gone off my my brain hurts yeah. it's too much it's overwhelming so for mm -hmm. me it's about how can I make something like this that comes very naturally to me that I absolutely love but how can I then make that easier for somebody to understand which is the beauty of what you do with human design and your work so yes as I say and don't ever be afraid to kind of reach out you know just kind of say Absolutely. look I don't really understand what this means um right. and I'm happy to kind of hop on a call with it with you and uh, talk some more yeah, I think I think it helps a lot. Yeah, because a lot of people are interested in the cycles and the patterns and everything, and they want to they want to be their best and do their best, right? And exactly. kind of alleviate, like we were talking about, you know, simplifying things. And it's like, well, how do I simplify it if I don't know exactly what I'm dealing with? Right? Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. that awareness is huge. Oh my god! And I always say that awareness is key. Once you understand the cycles and the transits you get to understand and you have a little bit more compassion I feel for yourself and others and yeah. you get to understand what is kind of going on with you and you're going to get especially if you know your, your children's charts or your husband's charts or your parents charts it makes a hell of a difference and you understand ah now I know they like that <laughs> yeah yeah now I totally understand why this is happening yeah why this is happening why this cycle is coming in and why all these transits are going on and once we understand that ebb and flow of the natural form of patterns and cycles, you get a kind of easier ride because yeah. then you don't really kind of need to go. Because I always say there's never something bad or negativity in a chart because it's about how you're here to kind of navigate your life in this lifetime. Right. And it, it can kind of show in the chart. Okay, yeah, it might be a little bit challenging, but you grow from those challenges and you really kind of... 
I suppose, and get to understand yourself on, on, a, as a, on a deeper level of why mm-hmm. we do the things we do. Mm-hmm. And it helps us so much. It helps it, yeah. And I, I think it does give us a lot of grace because I think one thing COVID has taught us is that we have to have more allowance for ourselves Absolutely. to do what we do in our own time. Yeah. Instead of the push, 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 go, go, go. Um, especially being, it had a really big impact being a manifesting generator. And then all of a sudden everything's stopping. Stopped. Yeah. And it was like, um, what in the hell do I do now? You know? Yeah. So, I mean, it was a very big lesson in slowing down. So yeah, yeah. definitely. I find that especially that the fixed energy signs, like the Tauruses, the, the, the Aquarius is the Leos, and the score, score, uh, score is Scorpios. Scorpios. <laughs> they, Scorpios. <laughs> they, they're so much into their routines and they're so kind of set in their ways. And like my son, he's got a lot of fire energy, but, um, and he's also a manifesting generator and he has to expel his energy, his fire energy through routines, getting out, exercise. Because it affects his health, it affects his mentality. And when he was kind of like going through COVID and he was in, in university, he really struggles with that. He couldn't go to the gym every day. Yeah. yeah. And so I had to sit him down and explain his chart and say to him, look, you have to do something on a daily basis that will help you expel this fire that you have building up. So whether you start working out at home or you just go and go for a walk or you go for a run you don't have to go to the gym just do something and for him once he did that sort of like daily habit of okay I'm going to get up and go for a walk I'm going to get up and do something rather than sit in his bed and kind of like worry about it and just I don't want to do anything he really understood okay I have to do these things Mm -hmm. and it helps him so much so for me I always say to people If you can understand your children's charts or you can understand, give yourself the gift of understanding because you will, my gosh, you will benefit so much. It'll change your life. It will. My my ability to see my children as a projector and a generator, emotionally. Oh my gosh, so different energies. Well, and it's telling them and explaining why they want to do this. Why is is this tendency showing up, you know, and how can you work through it or how can you explain it how can you just roll with it instead of fighting it right exactly um yeah because my son being a generator has to process energy every day yes. and if he doesn't go to work out he has mm-hmm. a horrible night's sleep he wakes up the next day cranky and just out of sorts and it's yeah. like he's like I didn't sleep like at all exactly the same yeah. with Jack he's got to he's yeah. got to do these he's got to eat right he's got to eat the right foods and if he doesn't eat the right foods then his body gets out of alignment so for him routine is really really important mm-hmm. and f- actually doing something getting up and going to to you know he, he works as a physiotherapist so he has to now get up and go to work but for him it was kind of like even if he gets up like an hour early and just goes for a walk or just mm-hmm. goes just for you know like a as I say, for a run or jog or, or anything, that then sets him off then for the rest of the day. And he has a much better sleep and he feels that he wants to then eat better rather than if he's tired, exhausted, then he'll kind of go for comfort food, snacking and comfort foods where he knows then he's, he'll, he'll put on weight and then he feels so like, blah. so he's kind of like, oh, well, Jack, you've got to do it. <laughs> Maybe you've got to listen to your mother. <laughs> right. Well, and I think that, um, <laughs> Uh, uh, I think also with being a manifesting generator, I've realized that a lot of us manifesting generators need to take like the foam top off the beer. It's almost like I need to walk first thing in the morning, even if it's just a couple of miles, just to get that edge of energy off yeah. the top. So I can be more even keeled and flow exactly. through my day without having, you know, that ee, 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 yeah. all day. <laughs> You know, I mean, that, and then when I don't walk, it's hilarious. My husband's like, did you walk today? Yeah, you haven't done, you haven't done, I'm like, for me, it's, no, it's, leave me alone. It's my spiritual practice. Every, you know, if I don't meditate or I don't do my, my routines, um, I have the, the 515 channel. So if I don't do those routines, oh, it upsets me for the rest of the day. So, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
I know. Me too. Me. Yes. I'm so glad we got to do this. This was fun. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and um, we'll see everybody later. Bye. Bye.